Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. first reading is from Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Seshem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now, if you're unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river of the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you're living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord, our God, who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that went, along the way that we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who live in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. <clears throat> Please uh, read with me so, uh, a portion of Psalm 34, repeating the refrain both before and after. Taste, Taste and see, see that the Lord is good. Yeah. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the broken heart, and will serve those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones. 
not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The second reading is from Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord. <coughs>
For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate when they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Somewhere along the line, they believed that the most important thing in their lives was that Jesus Christ came and enhanced their life. It really didn't matter exactly what they were doing or where they were. Because um, St. Paul's is the kind of church to me that, that everyone, no matter who they were or where they were from, felt welcome and felt somehow there was something that would enhance their lives and make it possible to live Through these years, you have continued to do these things. And I think it's very important for you to realize that the sacrament is a very strengthening part of the game. <coughs> the idea that somehow, in, in the gospel we're talking about, Jesus saying, eating my flesh and drinking my blood. And unless you get worried about some kind of cannibalistic type 
connotation there, it's the idea that this is symbol, symbolic of the gift of himself to our lives. Because eating is something which is a very important part of sustenance of life. A very important way. It's not just something that just we do as a, some kind of intangible, but the eating is something that influences our entire body. And to me it's the idea that when we come and receive communion, we are in essence uh, receiving what stands for his body and his blood. And we're taking this into our system the same way we do with all food stuffs. And these food stuffs go down our throat and into our stomach and throughout our entire system, through our blood bloodstream and every part of our body, from the comely to the uncomely. Every part of our body is somehow enhanced by receiving this particular documentary evidence that he carries. It's most important for us to realize this is not just some idea, but this is something tangible. It's sort of like at one time uh, I ran for mayor of a small town in North Carolina and I lost by 93 votes out of uh, something like 1900 cast. And um, it was a pretty good showing for the first time out. And sometimes when I'm not preaching, I'll tell you that about everything you hear about politics is true. So I <laughs> learned that myself. The interesting thing is that I had one group of people who decided they, uh, they came out publicly saying that this group was going to back me. And at the time of the election in that particular precinct, which was going to back me, they, uh, I lost by about 10%. So I said afterwards, well, you know, I really appreciate your support, but I'm really kind of curious because we had this big meeting where you all were going to support me. And what happened? And they said, well, your opponent came out saying that he was going to provide curbing and guttering and pave the streets and things like that. And you came out and said that you were going to try to present a uh, community which was uh, fair to everyone concerned, which was um, somehow uh, creating a climate for all men of goodwill to express themselves and to live at peace. And I said, well, what is wrong with that? He said, well, it's a good idea, but on the other hand, it's too intangible. They would rather have curbs and guttering whether they get them or not. And so it ended up that the man who defeated me happened to be mayor for another 12 years <laughs> after I lost to him. And at the time he left, they still didn't have curbing and guttering at that time. <laughs> and I don't know if they had any situation where things were better uh, or some area of uh, harmony and peace that people could work out their problems. But it's the idea that so many times in religion, people want something which is concrete and tangible, something that they can see, something which is just not a concept. Somehow Jesus said, this is not a concept. I'm giving you myself. I'm giving you myself. And when you stop and you think about it, um, quite often in counseling, I see people who have lost children and um, this is the sort of thing that we try to deal with the fact of the loss of a child. And then one of the things that uh, people say, and I tell them don't pay attention to people in churches, and it could sound strange, but anyway, I said, they'll tell you they know what you're going through, and they don't really know what you're going through. So I will simply say that I believe that through the grace of God, in time, you'll be able to live with that tragedy. Somehow, no child replaces any other child. And no child is uh, dispensable. The important thing to realize is that God can help all these things work through and work out in your life. And then I say to them, lest you think you've done feeling God, you've got to remind, remind yourself that he gave his only child for you and for me. So he knows. When he says, I know what you're going through, he knows. give you all these things we read about in the gospel this morning, all the helmet of salvation and all this uh, equipment for warfare there that the Lord will provide us to go through the purpose of this life. <coughs> it is 
very important to realize that no matter what happens in the world, that he is there with us and he sees these things. And it's amazing that uh, sometimes we're not even looking for him and he's there and he's bringing all <coughs> kinds of really interesting aspects into our lives and it's a matter of being open to these things. It's a matter of being grateful for all the times that we've shared with people who sat in these pews and the times that we've sat at the knees of people here and the times we learned from people who were here and times when somehow God has been in our lives and blessed us. It doesn't matter how many people were here, but the fact that everyone here has in some way enhanced and encouraged to go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. And so we're all here as debtors that have received from the Father Almighty what we need to be able to write and to make it a great place in which to live. Because the thing about it is that no matter what our politics or who represents this morning let us pray that as we go through life and our troubles and turmoil, as we go through all this, that we will feel his presence, that he will lift us up and help us feel safe, strengthened by this very tangible gift of his body and blood. Not just saying one word, he says, eat my blood and drink my blood. Eat my, my body and drink my blood. He is saying, here, take this. Take and eat this. This is a tangible gift for you and me, saying, I care for my life. Now, to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, be ascribed to his most just degree, almighty majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore.
God have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. especially Father Nelson. It's so good to have you back with us again. The next Sunday, remember that the service begins at 11 o'clock, and then the following Sunday, Bible study starts at, at 9.45 in the uh, Sunday School building. I don't know whether all of you got your sad news on the call of tree this morning or not, um, but it's sad that I have to announce that uh, Lala's father passed away this morning at 6.30. And she asked that you keep her and her family in your prayers. Well, the windows in the kitchen have been completed. Hopefully we'll be able to save, save some heating and air conditioning costs this way. Are we laying lay out the phone lines <coughs> for homecoming this week? Zumba, Tuesdays at, and Thursdays from 6 to 7 and Saturdays at 10.30. We're really having a good turnout for that, and uh, all the ladies are welcome to attend. Are there any other announcements? Just a quick reminder to you, CW, that we will have our first meeting today after the service. Um, and also, remember that next Sunday is Pastor Sunday. So anyone who does that can provide some non-perishable food items. It'll be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Anyone else have any announcements? John, uh, do you need to make an announcement about choir practice? Or? Uh, we had a unanimous turnout yesterday afternoon. Oh, so it's already started. Yeah, except everybody forgot. It was unanimous. We will try again next week, 4.30 Saturday afternoon. So, so we'll have a choir next Sunday. Uh, probably not. Probably not next week. Okay. Give, give us a week or two to get ready. Okay. All right. Oh, so good. It didn't take too long to get ready. But please, uh, if there's no other announcements, please join us after the service for refreshments and fellowship in the parish hall. Well, in gross human inefficiency, it turns out, if you will hold the audience back there for a minute, turn to page 367 for the prayers of the people. <laughs> <laughs> 
392 for perfect people. <laughs> Thank you. 392. So, we will wait for a minute. We will get back to the schedule here. So, the prayers of the people today can be found on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For our families. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for the justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the nation of comfort, fear, and justice, and protection. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who claim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Rowan, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Catherine, our presiding bishop, Michael, Bill, and Chip, our bishops, Beth, our regional priest and canon to the bishops, Jane, our regional deacon, Father Rick, our vicar, Father Nelson, our guest celebrant, Chip, our seminarian, and David, our deacon. Uh, aspirant to the diaconate, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve the diocesan church. For our companion diocese of Botswana and Costa Rica. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Betty and Bill, Brian, Herb and Nancy, Kelvin, Savannah, Donald, Joe, and Helen. For those who are homebound, Annie, Shirley, and Ed. For those serving in the armed forces of our country, Charles, Harvey, Hayes, Jerry, Ronald, and Will. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, for Linda and Vernon's anniversary in the coming week. For you, John. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. For all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. A gracious God, who is merciful, in your compassion, forgive us our sins. Thank you. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
God that passes all understanding. Keep their hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you all. Amen. Amen.